Better. Nailed it. Hit the post. Hey, yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, yeah. It's the World Record Podcast starring the A Train and B Man. The World Record Podcast starring the A Train and B Man. When you want to listen to a funny podcast, you know you can. Just tune in your dial to WRP.com, worldrecordpodcast.com. Watch the videos, subscribe and listen, and rate and review. And Smash that subscribe. Smash the like button, baby. Smash your uh, butt. Smash your testicles. Pay a lady in high heels to step on your nuts and videotape it. That's a whole category of porn now. Didn't exist like 20 years ago, but now it's all oversaturated. People have to invent stuff because they're bored with normal sex. But don't you think people were doing that before? I you think don't think a so? Small like rich I mean, guys. I think people something. have been doing. I guess dominatrix. You know what's have crazy? Around. I've just found this out. Bestiality is illegal in California. What? Bestiality is illegal in California. I just I figured what's that out the... because a friend of ours. Whatever, but I just thought that was interesting. Yeah, a friend of ours smears jelly on his backside and pays a dog to lick it off. I I went on this article and it said, "Is it is bestiality legal in California?" No. <laughs> and then it was like at the bottom of the article, it was written by a lawyer who was like, if you're in trouble, <laughs> give me a call. It's like, oh, my God. That's a real. He's taking on the crazy clients. That's why people don't like lawyers. I mean, I do think it's funny because it's like, who's going to accuse him of it? The dog or the cat or whatever he's doing? <laughs> the, horse? <laughs> the horse is like, I'm, I'm calling 911. Uh, the case of Fido versus uh, Pervy. Versus, yeah. Uh, Ginger. Garfield versus, who's the guy who owned Garfield? John. John. <laughs> Garfield the cat versus John Arbuckle. <laughs> that was John's last name. Arbuckle. Yeah. I just, I I mean, it's disgusting, obviously, but. And then, and then in the article, it was like, you know, do- obviously animals can't consent so if you are to say, like, in your defense that, like, the animal w- liked it or enjoyed it, he's like, the lawyer was like, don't say that because then you're, like, it make it makes you look worse. If you're like, but he liked it, he was into it, or the dog was aroused or whatever. Yeah. So let me get this straight. <laughs> <clears throat> you, a person who has hours of footage. No, let me, about, I'll tell you what Talking it was. about. Hours of footage. Hours of footage of you on this podcast talking about you having sex with a dog and women have someone who's obsessed with having sex with a dog. Now, for some reason, you start looking up <laughs> legal lo- lawyers who if represent If you go people. in my phone. Did you do something? I did not. I did, did not search it. Did you do someone something? Someone sent that to me. Did you do something that I need to know about? No, I don't want to have sex did with a dog. Did you do something? Women that, would... that have big giant dogs want to have sex with their dog. Not me. I have a little tiny girl dog. What am I going to do with that? Scissor it. Put peanut butter on there. Have her lick it off. Scissor it. Yeah, that Scissor too. Scissor it. Is scissoring a dog considered uh like what what's the cutoff? I mean obviously anything. penetration and stuff, but like what like Four rolling plank. around naked with your dog? Is that what's that like if you have a a, hmm. a boner? I don't know, but again it's like who's gonna get you in trouble with that? How are let's, you gonna get in trouble? Let's call a dentist and ask them. Okay. How well how are you gonna get in trouble? I guess somebody sees you. Or you film it or something. Yeah. But you know what's also interesting? The article said that it's not illegal to watch bestiality. Porn. Um, That's okay. not illegal, but it's illegal to like engage with it. Or record it, I guess. But if you want to watch it... Brendan, I know that you're starting to explore things. and I've seen... 
How can I help you? Hey, um, my wife. So that get the, So you know, like, do you own a pet? Do you have a dog or anything? Excuse me. Uh, this is a dental office. No, I know, I know. Yeah, this is relating to a yes. dental problem. But we have a. I wanted yes, to. Yes. You do have a dog. No. <laughs> oh, okay. Because my wife has a theory that women with like big male dogs have, yeah. um, you know, relations with relations them. with them. Well, have you ever seen like a young girl with like a big, like, like a I'm great talking Dane. big, Great Dane, not neutered. Big. Just it's just her and this big giant dog. I mean, what do you think they do when the lights? I mean, go do out? you think that they they do that? The, like, how, what percentage of women with big dogs do you think make love to? I'm going to say seventy five. So I'm going to say sixty five. Okay, what do you say, ma'am? Um, same age. <laughs> I see. Same age. Well, she's saying 65%. Oh, 65 percent of, of so, women. really, you think that women have sex with their dogs if, like, women with big dogs might just do it sometimes? Oh, no. For that one, no, I don't think they have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't think they have sex with their dogs? I just, I just, why do you have a big, giant dog well, that's not, that has its balls intact? Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to ride it like a horse? Sorry, I well, myself, I never had dogs, so I have no experience with them. Yeah, no, well, that's, that's okay. Because well, that's good that yeah, you did it. Sorry about that. And my no, wife is trying sorry. to find a lawyer for some reason because I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. But first, I have a dental problem that's kind of related to. So, when my wife told me that she, con when I found her search history and saw that she was searching for a lawyer that, that represents bestiality cases in defense mm -hmm. defends them i fainted and i hit my tooth on the on the counter in our kitchen counter we just got granite granite mm -hmm. counters um mm -hmm. kitchens uh california kitchens are you familiar with that company they do great work yeah we got a uh, backsplash granite um, anyway, he marble. chipped his tooth on the brand new granite well, so countertop, my tooth... and now the the countertop is, which is one slab of granite, is now chipped. So no, that's not chipped. My tooth is loose. Well, I pulled my tooth out. I guess is the point. Yeah, you weren't I, supposed to. My tooth was loose, so I got a pair of pliers mm -hmm. and yanked it out. Now I saved mm -hmm. it, and I was wondering if they can can dentists replace a tooth? Can they put my tooth like back in? Cut, like if you cut your finger off and bring it into the ER, they put can it on still it, If the crown, yeah, the crown came off basically, right? No, no, the, the tooth, I pulled, he pulled the whole it out. tooth out. The whole tooth came out. With, you uh, pulled it out? I pulled it out with mm -hmm. a pair of pliers and I got the whole uh, He's got stump the whole and tooth. everything. The whole, the, with you the know. stuff that comes out. You know, like the two pointy parts at the top of the tooth, like when they make a cartoon mm -hmm. tooth, that'll be the legs. Yes, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I got that whole part, and I've had it on ice. I've kept it on ice. So can they reattach my tooth is the question? No. <laughs> if the whole tooth out, no, they can't put it back. Oh. Do you ever have dreams about losing your teeth, ma'am? No. Oh, you never had that dream? I have those dreams a lot, no. and, you know, it's supposed to be a I'm... metaphor for, like... I never had that dream. <laughs> oh, it's miserable. Oh. I, I just think of it as like, yeah, you lose a tooth. Like my husband who pulled his own tooth out. I don't know why he did that. Because you slept with it because she is having an affair with a dog. No, and that's I'm like, not. that's the worst. We like have some a guys, small female dog. So I, I don't friend, know who I would be, which dog I would be sleeping with. I have a friend who whose wife oh went. Oh my goodness. I have a friend. So who's, if it's a female, so that's a female. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm not lesbian. I'm not gay. <laughs> She's scissored a yeah. dog and... I have a friend whose wife went les, and he was really upset about that. But at least she mm -hmm. went les with another human lady. My wife is bi, but only with dogs. So she scissors and sleeps with dogs. And that's, you know, I mean, and you that's part that's of not... my dental. You know, I haven't brushed my teeth because I'm depressed and I pulled my tooth out. And also, uh, well, well, how many people have you slept with? Like total in your life. Sorry, I can't answer that question. Oh, that, that <laughs> many? Why would you ask her that? Yeah, I mean. That many? You can't. Listen, it doesn't matter who sorry, I've slept doctor with. Sorry, doctor calling me. I have to go. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I have to go. We, yeah. Sorry about that. That's all okay. right. Thank but you. Ballpark, was it over Thank 10? Thank you. That's enough. You're stop welcome. asking. Stop what? harassing That's this a legitimate question. Bye. Right. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right. Um, 
So you can and take your tooth off of the ice now. Woo! It's showtime! You didn't have to ruin it. I, I needed to, I wanted to end it. Oh. Because <laughs> we have a guest on the line. Oh, she was still there. We have a guest on the line. Do you guys want to guess who it is? No. Do you want to guess who it is? I don't really want to talk to whoever this the guest is. Probably someone I don't like. No. Aaron, can you let the guest into the room? Uh, we have a guest. Uh, is it on video? First time, long time, yeah. Oh. First or f First time, long time listener, first time caller. Hello? Yes. Hey, look who it is. Hey, my it's favorite. old. You know what? I'm going to give Henry a new nickname. He's called Handsome Harry, Henry now. Handsome Henry. Oh, is it the beard? Yeah. <laughs> what it's was so his... funny. I, I've never been a beard guy. I mean, you know, the whole time I've known you, you were the beard guy and I wasn't. And uh, but all of a sudden, uh, everybody's complimenting me on the beard. And so it's like, should it? Is life that simple that I should have just done that 20 years ago? You know, it, it, it kind of is where the, um, uh, I think that like the only thing that stood between me and having a highly successful comedy career is just like a weird haircut. I think that will, that will help. Well, when you got the beard, you were really kicking ass. I mean, there was Conan right away. Um, a lot of other stuff too. And we were all very jealous and who would have known that if we just grew facial hair. Yeah. Well, beards we'd be on were, Conan you know, also. everybody, beard, a lot of people had beards back then. It wasn't, if I had it to do over, I don't think I would, I should have, I should have not, I should have taken the beard off once ever, once you started noticing nine out of 10 comics have beards. But yeah. Well, I mean, I thought the beard bubble would have burst by yeah. now, but here I am jumping in like decades later and it still works. Yeah, no, I see it's making a resurgence. I actually haven't had a beard for a while and now I'm, I'm kind of slowly bringing it back. You always have a beard. No, I haven't Not had, long, I have, you have a beard. But you always have, I mean, as we soon didn't, as you This shave. isn't beard talk with Brendan and Henry. <laughs> that could be a, you know, we, I think a lot of listeners probably, uh, I mean, we're, we're talking very candidly about it. It's a real thing. Yeah. How many it people... Be how it many... makes you look like at, like ethnic or something. Or maybe it's just yeah. the lighting in you your kitchen. But you look You look like uh, Middle Eastern or something. Oh, yeah. Kind of look... swarthy. Yes. Yeah. Um, maybe like uh, the, the most interesting guy in the world type thing. Yes. You know what? You know what might be a good idea? And just for fun. Dye your, yeah. dye your hair and beard jet black. Just give it a shot. Oh, <laughs> that would be very interesting. That'd be pretty funny. You would look completely it. different with black hair and, and a black beard. You know what? I would do that too, and then we could be a comedy team. We'll make believe we're Middle Eastern brothers, <laughs> just for like. Yeah, a maybe month. like uh, if we uh, <laughs> like uh, the Crisagis brothers. Do you know who they are? Uh uh. C H R I S A G I S. Just look them up on YouTube. You'll see what I mean. But uh, we could be that. They're a singing duo. Okay. Um. So, okay, uh, what, what I was going to say is we should probably wait until our careers are 100% dead, and then that <laughs> way we can reinvent, I, reinvent I, ourselves. I think it's okay. Oh, yeah, I see, yeah. I see the Crusaders brothers. We'll put this picture on. I mean, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <that, laughs> how do you know about those guys? Yeah, who the hell are these guys? <clears throat> do you know the guitarist uh, brother? I found them on YouTube. They sing uh, Christian music oh, and... I don't know. I mean, the, the, I go through these YouTube, uh, you know, uh, rabbit holes or whatever. Yeah. Here, I'm going to get headphones really quick. Okay. Bye, Henry. And that's Henry's no, no. kitchen. Um, that's his no, kitchen that he's in. <laughs> he's back. Uh-oh. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I think he got lost. You know, <laughs> that could be dementia, too. I think the beard could be early onset dementia. Having a beard. Yeah. Or the beard causes It's just it. a little quiet. I just think Henry, like, maybe has dementia a little bit. Because look at him. He doesn't know what he's... He just plugged that into a toaster, so he doesn't even know what he's doing. <laughs> okay. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. This is much better. <laughs> um, 
So what's uh, what's going on? I see you're in your kitchen. Are you going to make us a dish today? Uh, I got to be careful because uh, I made something. Well, the, the last two days have been like 48 hours of cooking. I made um, boba tea. Oh, that really? Was for my Patreon. Yeah. And um, that one came out okay. <laughs> but uh, I did something called uh, addictive cheerio peanut butter bar yesterday okay and uh i literally had to google can you get cancer from burned food oh yeah i don't know if that's real or not but i think uh i've been hearing it way too much like so <laughs> you burnt the 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 peanut butter cheerios bars well it, what you're supposed to do is in the uh in a skillet you put uh, two tablespoons of butter, marshmallows, and peanut butter, chocolate, and Cheerios. And they scorched so fast. It, oh, it's yeah. like if you ever need uh, some uh, campfire starter or something like that, just put that combination in there. It just like it just got charred into just total crap so, uh, so fast. So if you're listening and you're lost in the woods and you have all those food yeah. products, pile them up and set them on fire. Yeah, if you have your frying pan. <laughs> yeah. With you. Well, um, they probably have marshmallows because they were going to probably go there to do a marshmallow roasting or whatever. Yeah. And they probably have peanut butter too. That's a pretty good, smart thing to bring when you're in the woods. Yeah. You can live for, you can live indefinitely in the woods with a cigarette lighter and a pocket knife. Yeah. Hmm. And I uh, guess a jar of peanut butter wouldn't hurt. So did you have to redo the protein. video? Did you have to redo the video then, I guess, because there was kind of, was, is that going to be like a blooper or an outtake reel? Uh, no, it's going to live there forever. But, uh, you know, I'm worried about, uh, I, I guess that the, some types of cancer have been related to uh, burned yeah. toast. That There's a chemical uh, that gets created when yeah. you burn something. And that, chemical has been shown to cause cancer isn't it burnt? in laboratory mice though so they just yeah. take a syringe of the stuff and shoot it right into a, a mouse's ass of course you're going to get cancer <laughs> from it that way so yeah i'm not totally convinced but it's still i don't i don't think there's a lot of people who cook well that are constantly googling uh can you get cancer from burned food? well wait but <laughs> so did like you can. did you eat the the burned no, no. I was more worried about the fumes. Oh, I did not oh, eat oh. it. <laughs> I was oh. going to say. So wait, you think the fumes from burnt food gives you cancer? If you could smell it, it was repelling. Yeah. And, like, and, and and you know what? Technically, if you're if you're smelling something, that thing that you're smelling, its molecules are in your nose. Yeah, and, and in, in your, your brain. Yeah. Well, and that's like, yeah, so fart is shit molecules. Yeah, that's why it's an extremely rude thing to do. You're literally shitting in somebody's mouth or in their nose, yeah. but it might as well be their mouth. Is that? I mean, is that a real kitchen or is that a green screen? This is real. I okay. do have a green screen nowadays that I'm using. It's not set up right now, but uh, it's. I'm trying to be more like uh, the production value that you guys have, because yeah. you do green screen a lot. No, we're doing it. Right we're now. we're in these places that we're standing in front of. Uh, well, you've got green screen, but uh, it's oh, just yeah. a regular green screen. Yeah. No, there'll be stuff behind us. Anyway, oh, what's cool. uh, what's been... Um, so we can show, we'll put a link to the Henry's Kitchen there, and we'll show maybe a little bit, while you were talking about it, we can show a little video of your... Of, Absolutely. Of your, uh, um, yeah, let me know thing. if you need yeah, any materials good. for me, me to send. I've got a lot of... Uh, that's all I do now. I'm a... I'm a cook. And is I, that, is it getting you a lot of attention in like the cooking community? Has Guy Fieri uh, ever reached out to you? No, I, I would love that so much, but, um, I, uh, you know, I mean, you and I both have been doing this a long time. And, uh, a lot of times when, uh, when, and I'm, by the way, I'm talking about cooking, Yeah. but, um, <laughs> It, a lot of times you need to lean into something when it's going well. And it occurred to me, you know, I started doing this cooking thing about 11 years ago and uh, people took to it. I remember uh, reporting to you that I had my first viral video and it was an exciting time. It was like 2011. Yeah. And uh, I sort of uh, shied away from it for a while because I was like, well, I don't want to be known as the cooking guy on YouTube. But uh, 
like if you told me back then when I was trying to be a rock star, uh, you know, or whatever it was on stage, um, <laughs> that in 10 years, my entire living would be made by having young people make fun of me for <laughs> cooking poorly. I would have shot myself in the head. Seriously. <laughs> I would have, uh, and I still might, but I'm just saying that, uh, I just wouldn't have, uh, you know, I wouldn't have believed it. And, um, but here now I love it. It's, uh, I have merchandise. I have soundtrack albums. I'm going to make another Jose Suicidio album yes. this year. And people, uh, are giving me fan art and, uh, pictures of their pets. And, uh, it's, it's better than anything else that I've had going on. That must've been, I think I found your <clears> cooking <throat> videos. It must've been 2000. Well, maybe it was 2012 or 13. Um, but I saw first it was your coffee, you and your fucking coffee. And yeah. then from there, I was watching your cooking videos and they were so fun. And, and I had to show everybody. I'm like, you guys have to watch this because at first you don't know. You don't know if it's legit. Like if you really are just I mean, which you are, you are a cook. Um, yeah, what do you that's, mean? But it really that's the is goal. So funny. But it is. Yeah, and you're finally in one. You're part of the archives. I know. I I was just thinking about oh, that. Oh yeah, we have another baby now that too. That was so wanna... funny. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Send it over. <laughs> you you should have him. I'll you should come, come back to babysit, and then you could do another video with the yeah. two of them. Yeah, I'll try to keep the the cancerous uh, chemicals out of it. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I'm sorry about your cancer scare. That's that's. Uh... That's a scary story, man. Oh, yeah, yeah it is it. very scary. Uh, but you know what? The uh, the human body was only designed to live till about 38 years old. So I'm just kind of on borrowed time now anyway. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. No, apparently I was reading that cells uh, stop um, regenerating at 38 and the deterioration process or what we know as death starts happening. And it takes a long time for some so that the goal is to put it off. But that's why birthdays are such sad times after 38, because you're uh, you're just closer to death. Why would anybody celebrate that? You oh. should be celebrating all the other days. You still make sperms, though. And those are cells. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I guess that's a good point. Maybe I was just reading a, an article that was no good. Yeah. How did it was uh, you make a new sperm? Year old. It was on uh, <laughs> it's uh, medium.com. New sperms are generated every day, maybe every hour. I don't even know how much. Should we yeah, but I don't think those are cells. I think those are like um, sperm cells. Are they cells? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe um, the, your body just stops regenerating good cells. So maybe those sperm are just not quality. Right. The quality of it deteriorates. And right. how do you, what do you do? Like a taste test? So we should like do the, you know how when people get a glass of wine, they smell it and then swish it around? Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do. Well, you know who does that is uh, detectives do that all the time. Like if they show up to a scene. Yeah. They, I don't they, know if you've seen on Law and Order, but they'll, they'll like lick something. Yeah. Before, and they'll be like, oh, that's semen. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, why did, why did you start licking it before you've. <laughs> I don't know if they do that. They do that on the uh, the types of videos that I watch. There's got to uh... be <laughs> people tasting semen at crime scenes. Just every. <laughs> yeah, that's my thing. That'd be a fun compilation, like Henry the Detective, where it's just a bunch of scenes of you <laughs> showing up to a crime scene and like tasting well, a just substance licking wine. everything. It's semen. It's, it's semen. feces. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, ah, oh, God, I wish I never thought I'd say this, but I wish it was semen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. The. Um, and you like to talk about, I know you're very, you're into uh, sperms and semen and stuff, because I was thinking there was something, there was some kind of a uh, tragedy on the news recently, and it was at a place near, it wasn't Point Magoo, but it was near, it was like Point Loma or something. It made me think of oh, Point, yeah. Point Magoo. And uh, that's... Um, Point Magoo, should I tell the story? Have I told the story on the podcast? Ooh, it's hard to say. I don't know, but I love it's, any it, story you tell. I love. It's only about a minute long, but yeah. okay. So, I was doing a show in Camarillo, which is next to a Navy base called Point Magoo. Point Magoo is uh, 
on the beach and I <laughs> saw the sign while I was driving to the gig and I actually thought it was a, just a funny name for a place. So I did this joke. It was at a bar and the joke is stupid. And that's not why I'm telling the story. This, the joke is I was like, uh, Hey everybody, I just had sex on the beach right here at point Magoo and I didn't want to get the girl pregnant. So I had to point Magoo at her tits. You know, that's the joke. Yeah. But uh, so a friend of mine uh, heard that joke and wanted to repeat it to her boyfriend. And she couldn't remember the name Point Magoo. So she had to kind of make it up. And, you know, when somebody tells a joke and they butcher it. So she was like, how did it go? He said he was at this Navy base on the beach and it's called like like aim majiz or something like that. And he said, I didn't want to get the girl pregnant. So I had to aim majiz at her tits and her boyfriend's listening to this going like, there's no Navy base called aim majiz. This is stupid. What's this guy's name? And she's like Henry Phillips. And he's like, this is the worst comic ever. You don't make up a funny name for a beach and then work your dumb joke backwards from it. That's stupid. And it made me look like an asshole. And Once again, <laughs> old Henry gets the short end of the stick just because someone else misrepresented the worst, him. The worst commission But aren't there, ever. there was a, <clears throat> and uh, it's been a while since we talked to you, so I don't think we <laughs> talked about this. There's a couple things. Um, the, but there was a comic and and I know that there are comics who who actually do that though, who will invent a whole scenario. Like, didn't you? Wasn't there a comic, or was this just like an example you made up where he's like, so apparently, like, you can't smoke in bars, but you can like jack off in bars. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was uh, I don't remember the specific one, but that was just it was a funny thing. Okay, Augie Smith and I were in Idaho, and we saw a guy on stage do some joke where he was like, uh, so I've got this friend who says it's okay to smoke if you're drinking. Where's the logic in that? And then he tears down the logic. And I just remember Augie kind of like leaning over to me real quietly and going, nobody has ever said it's okay to smoke while you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's so true, but it's like, I guess I've heard people say I only smoke when I'm drinking, but yeah. So we just started getting on this thing of like f false premises. It's like how you can always make yourself look like a genius. And yeah, there was a comic that I saw on YouTube that was like one of those kind of Dennis Leary type guys, but uh -huh. from way back in the eighties. And he's like, uh, so in Sweden, they're coming up with a cigarette that's good for you or something like that. I, I don't know what, it, what his premise was, but of course, they didn't have Google back then. So he just kind of came up with this country just so he could work, <laughs> work a joke into it. But now that we have like the ability to look stuff up, there's never been a study in Sweden where they're trying to make a cigarette that's good for you or whatever. But it's like, it was just funny how, like you, if you wanted a premise, you say, so apparently in, uh, you know, just make up some place. <laughs> Apparently in Finland, you can jack off in a McDonald's. Like, yeah. <laughs> let me get this straight. So uh, what kind of special sauce, you know, you can make yeah. a joke. <laughs> but it's like, you can't jack off at a McDonald's in Finland. What is this no, guy I can't, talking about? I can't bring my own condiments into McDonald's, but this guy over here could whip up his own back of special <laughs> sauce in front of my wife and yeah. kids. Exactly. <gasps> or uh, what was another one? Um it was something about, uh, so yeah, yeah. Apparently, you know, they're doing away with, uh, traffic lights. Oh, that's real smart. Now everybody's <laughs> going to be just running into each other all the time. It's like, no, they're not though. <laughs> Where'd you come up with that stupid? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's in, uh, you know, uh, Kazakhstan or something. Just, yeah. doing that. that that is one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, there's this one, this the one guacamole. Yeah, thing. that's what I was gonna say. Where yeah. it's like the whole premise. She's like, this comedian's like, so I was on this party planning committee to plan this party, and I was like, why don't we have? And someone was like, oh, we should have guacamole. And I was like, oh, yeah, that would be fun. And she was like, yeah, I could make it with avocado and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, oh, my gosh, this white girl thought it was pronounced whack-a-mole. It's guacamole. But then you're like, 
Wh- what? You're on a party planning committee? What are you a- talking about? <laughs> no, what does that mean? That's, <laughs> that's one of my biggest pet peeves is like, I can follow you. It's like I'm inside their heads where I'm like, I know exactly what oh, yeah. happened here. You saw guacamole written on a menu, you said, oh, walk, like maybe jokingly pronounced it guacamole, like people, uh, or guacamole, like people call Target Target or whatever. And then just yeah. constructed, like reverse engineered <laughs> yeah, yeah. this completely where it's like, Every moment of the story is like, wait, hold on. You were what? On a party planning committee? Okay. <laughs> All right. And then, okay. And then what? This lady said whack-a-mole and you thought she was talking about the, okay, the, the game where you have to hit the moles or whatever at the carnival. And then you, like, it's just, it's like this never. Oh, yeah. No, I, we can see that stuff coming from And the miles thing is, away. it's like, <laughs> it never happened, but it's, you know, like, I could cut you some slack if it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah, such exactly. a dumb idea that like everybody's thought of. You know, where it's like, oh, you well, took yeah. you took some stuff out of one of my notebooks that I wrote when I was like drunk off my ass <laughs> and reread yeah, the next yeah, day and said, yeah, Oh, that's exactly. a stupid idea. Everybody's <laughs> fucking thought of that. And then Well, yeah, the Sorry, no. just that whole thing of like anytime a comedian does the thing where they're like, uh this guy said this. So my comeback was, yeah. and it's something awesome. It's like, well, I don't know that the other guy said that. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it's other... like, how did they set you up so perfectly for you yeah, to say exactly. this, like zinger? It's like, yeah, right. More likely it was three days later. <laughs> yeah, you, you were like, it. oh, what I should have said was <laughs> this. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I've noticed too, I have to really start making a list of like these tropes. Uh, another, like I, you see this in, you'll notice it more too. In a lot of stand-up, people are always looking someone dead in the eye. They're like, so I looked him dead in the eye and said, blah, blah, blah. I have i don't know if I've oh, heard they, that yet. Yeah, they're always saying, they're always like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I look, you know, like, yeah, he said, you know, he said that we wanted to get whack-a-mole and he was going to make it with avocado. So I looked him dead in the eye and said, do you mean guacamole? Oh! <laughs> like, there's always like... <laughs> Some kind of, uh, there's another one that's kind of like look them dead in the eye. Um, either way, yeah. You're making me miss watching comedy in a weird way. Uh, it's always fun. We saw Louis C.K. Type of stuff. Yeah, we, we saw, saw Louis C.K. Oh, when was, oh, now. did you see him at the, uh, the is it downtown the LA? Dolby. No, the Dolby Theater where they do the Oscars. In Hollywood. We were in oh. Hollywood. Best part of the whole uh, night is I found free parking. We on sure the did. street. That's really cool. Yeah, because we went to dinner at the Roosevelt Hotel. There's like a fancy restaurant. This was uh, for like a Christmas present for Amanda. And uh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, that's where really I started fun. comedy. Literally, there was the Cinegrill in there. That's in the Roosevelt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have this nice kind of fancy or, or uh, restaurant, but we ate and went to the you know the theaters right across the street. But honestly, like go, driving up to the Roosevelt to eat there I was just you know just accepting the fact of like I was like okay it's gonna be a hundred dollars to park here probably I'm gonna pay a hundred dollars yeah. to park the car and just let it go this is just a you know this is a big night out for us whatever and then as like literally a, a hundred feet away from the Roosevelt I was like wait was that just a spot over there yeah, that we almost were spot. like, no, you can't yeah. park here. There's no Made way we a can U-turn park here. And I was like, well, I'm just going to check it out. But yeah, there's <laughs> going to be some. And uh, yeah, yeah, free. Everybody parking. just avoids it because they think there's something, you know. Yeah, or like your car, <laughs> your car's going to get broken into. Or so, I, yeah, you're I think get that's towed. called, uh, there's this, an experiment called lear, uh, learned helplessness. So it's when they'll put like a dog in a room and they'll have a zapping uh, mechanism like an mm-hmm. electrocution thing and they'll put a steak or something on the other side of the room or whatever dogs like to eat a bone <laughs> or something yeah. and uh, every time the dog goes for it uh, they'll shock him yeah and uh, then all of a sudden they'll just uh, release the shocking device so that there's no um, n- no impediment anymore and the dog will not even try. The dog yeah. will just sit there and look at a steak. He's sitting in a room alone with a steak that he could eat, and he doesn't even do it because he's like, what's the point? It's just going to be, Yeah, I'm going to get shocked. 
Yeah. So that's what we all are in yeah. Hollywood. That's why that space was open. Yeah. Well, you, but uh, where do you do this? You're going to get towed or something. Is this at your place where you're doing this stuff? To yeah, that's, that's an experiment I'm doing. I, I'm, a, I'm an amateur uh, psychologist and yeah. I try to run experiments, but I'm actually doing it with a cat uh, just to see what the difference is. Yeah, that, that would be fun. You know that Milgram, is that the Milgram thing where they make people shock each other? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That well, they a... have they have someone telling them to do it. Right, right, right. And so they're list. It's like the authority that yeah. tests on authority, which oh, yeah, violates yeah, a lot I've of ethical codes it... now. But Wait, back you've then... never seen that? Uh, yeah, years ago, I oh, remember yeah, watching yeah. Oh, the, remember the documentary about it. Um, so is that so? That's one. That's that one in particular, Milgram. That because yeah. that was the guy's name or whatever. Now, what's I, I imagine this was done around the same time where they have a group of people. And like four of them are fake, but one guy's real. And they're like, okay, which oh. one of these lines is bigger than the other one? And everyone's like, line A, when line A is obviously shorter. But then the person doesn't want to, because everybody's agreeing that on something wrong, that the one He doesn't like, want to stick yeah, out. Okay. And he goes, yeah, yeah, he just agrees with what everybody else says. It's fascinating. There's a lot of really... But why isn't he that type of person that purposely says the opposite thing just because everybody else says that one. I don't think those Maybe people what... were invented b before like 2004. I think or also those kind of people out. in a, in a small <laughs> group setting where it's like, you're being watched. I yeah. think that changes everything too. Yeah. Of like, Oh, well wait, am I wrong? Like you just second guess what you I think, just, you, what you see. I, I got to say, and yeah, I was never in that situation, but I just, you know, watching those, I'm like, I don't, and this is why I'm not successful. Cause like, I would be like this, what are you fucking people talking about? Am I crazy? No, like you I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would stand you'd up. You'd be the and contrarian. Go, you'd take your thing out and you'd. Well, it's, well, if I have a captive audience. It's kind of what comedy is. Maybe that, I mean, how many times have we been at a show and you don't get people laughing until there's, it's, there's a couple people laughing and then they're all laughing. Like yeah. everybody doesn't want to be the first one to laugh. Yeah. Cause. They're afraid that they're going to be judged or something. But then if everybody's laughing. Yeah, sorry. I mean, it's the same kind of a deal. It's a group mentality. It's contagious. Mm -hmm. um, do you have uh, do you have any funny stories of any any new Henry Phillips uh, uh, classics in, in the making? I'm good. I, I, I have uh, I have about, I don't know, another 20 minutes or so. Um, oh. Sorry, that I, I didn't mean for that alarm to go off. And uh, I didn't hear the I, we alarm. Didn't hear Can we cut that in post? We didn't hear. Oh, okay. It. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised you didn't. Uh, okay, uh, man. I, well, that one that I told you uh, about uh, me at the Starbucks upstairs and bringing everybody oh, to yeah, follow yeah. me. Yeah, you told us that, that last time. That one has become a classic. That was the first time I told it, I think. And yeah. then uh, now it's uh, I regale. Uh, party it's guests so, all over the South. So I mean, funny. Yeah. I mean, I just picture it perfectly of you going upstairs with a group of people and they're like, what the fuck? Like, where's the star? Did There's we no Starbucks or whatever that? Yeah, that's a great yeah. story. If, if you guys <laughs> haven't heard that, go back to the last appearance Henry was on, which it's been a while. I got to say, you know, there was a they shout allowed. out to the Patreon people. Uh, and who are they? Henry's been requested. I've, you know, I've read it more than once in, discord and we love Henry. patreon where it's like you know what the hell henry phillips hasn't been on for somebody was like it's been 70 episodes or something which well we did know. the high, highway man one in studio where i had the wig yeah it was a while ago uh, um it's time's just then, flying by yeah i think we did some phoners but yeah no uh boy i i feel like there's gotta be well i have i don't know if uh, amanda you tell tell me if this sounds familiar when we were talking about the, um, you know, stand-ups, uh, whatever, yeah. making up situ situations, there's a funny story that you told me about that Mark Cohen told you because he's the MC. Mark Cohen is a friend of Henry's, friend of mine, but Henry's, uh, I like Mark. I don't know him as well as Henry, but oh, he's the house sure, MC yeah. at the Comedy Cellar in Vegas. And oh, I think I know what you're talking about. The the um the female comic and then the smooth black guy who followed yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well well it was he was telling me about how the uh lineups and by the way, I could be uh yeah, mis misremembering it or whatever, but from what I understand the crux of it was that the lineups aren't really designed to flow from one comic to right. another. Like and every so comedy it, club. When I started doing yeah. comedy, I was like blown away where I'm like <laughs> 
Why do you have me featuring? And nothing against him. I, we talked, uh, like, Greg Morton was, like, the first guy I ever opened for or something. Greg yeah. Morton is a guy who, you know, energetic, impressions, you know, holds a big mirror, a big magnifying glass up to his lips and sings Mick Jagger and, or lip syncs to the Rolling Stones. Either way, very different kind of act for me. And yeah, there's and, no thought put into it yeah. whatsoever. And so the, Oh, the, I, I do have a really quick uh, story about Greg Morton. And okay. getting him mixed up with Greg Warren, which is a funny story. Should I tell that one first? Yeah, 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 sure. yeah tell that one first. Oh, yeah, because you just mentioned it. But uh, when I went to Canada, I guess he's Canadian, Greg Morton. Very physical comedy, uh, dancing, like the whole thing is, you know. And then he's I've got my a... friend Greg Warren, who is extremely dry and uh, reserved, um, really Midwestern funny. kind of like sort of shy character and everything. And so... I went up to Canada and I, I just said, uh, do you guys ever get Greg Warren here? Does he ever work here? And uh, the feature act that I was working with goes, uh, oh, yeah, no, I just uh, I just opened for him recently. It was at a theater. And I go, oh, at a theater? He goes, yeah, he's too big. And I'm going, man, Greg told me that he doesn't even play up here and he's up there doing theater. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, uh, it was pretty great because he, there was one point when he was – he had just finished a big dance number and he was standing there in his tights and he had glitter all over him and, and he was just kind of like stopped and he was like, all right, screw you guys. That's funny. And I was like, wait, Greg Warren was in tights and he's doing a dance number with glitter. What the hell? Like, does Greg have this entire different life? Like up here, like a whole different Canada? Canadian routine. He's like, it really messed with my mind. My regular and, jokes uh, don't fly in Canada. Finally, we, finally, the guy's like, oh, I thought you said Greg, Greg Morton. And, uh, <laughs> That was just really fun for me to tr picture for a second. I was like, I, I don't see this happening at all. If you guys are familiar um, with uh, Greg Warren, it, it is funny to imagine him uh, doing... Uh, being doing anything with costumes, dancing, like all of it was he's so, just so straightforward. He's like, like you like an uncle or something. He's like an ex-wrestler, high school wrestler, coach guy, and just such yeah. a... You can't, I mean... <laughs> I can't even imagine that. But it's uh, like picturing Clint Eastwood doing that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but so the, um, so the comedy... but going back, okay, yeah. So so Cohen told me a story about this one girl who went up there and was just doing extremely dirty, you know, like uh, kind of like Sarah Silverman. I, I I haven't seen Sarah's act in a long time, but like the way that she was, where she's talking about, you know, uh, my boyfriend comes all over my face and uh, you know anal or whatever, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I, just that kind of like. You know, really dirty. And um, talking about how the next smelly guy who went up, she's uh, Cohen said was like, uh, he was like, um, he was like, hey, everybody. Uh, so, uh, you know, we all know what it feels like, you know, when you're with your lady friend and uh, she, uh, you know, she touches you sort of down there and you start getting that kind of tingling feeling. And everybody's like, is he talking about his cock? He's like, we've already, we've already explored like everything that you could possibly say about the, we've talked about ass sex and her pussies. brother's uh, dick smells like shit or God knows what, you know? And then he's just like, you know, when you're slow dancing and you get that little bit of, you know, tingling feeling like you're, it's like, it was just like such a, a whiplash, you know? Yeah. Well, it also just, but it really shows. demonstrates that. Yeah, that's um, and and these shows. By the way, I don't know if she said her brother's dick tastes like shit. I think I was <laughs> quoting an old uh, joke on that. Sorry, I just wanted to add that disclaimer. The um, these shows at the Comedy Cellar are all showcase shows, right? It's not. It's like the Comedy Cellar in New York, where it's like when you go to a show, it's not like you're gonna see Bill Burr. It's, I mean, you might see Bill Burr, but he's not headline. Like it's the, it's like what, like six or seven comics doing. 10, 15 minutes each. Is that? Yeah. How, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I got to get out there. I got to, have you done it? Yeah. Uh, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, might not have been a great fit because uh, I haven't done it since. And that was 2017. But uh, <laughs> who books that? I just that did think of lady? something kind of funny. Uh, so I don't know if you remember Stan Hope's joke about cock fingering. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Where it's he's just, like, it's, He's talking it's about like a lot of, well, sorry, <laughs> he's talking about, uh, it starts off with like 
the premise is that people say child pornography is rampant on the internet. Yeah. And he's like, you know, he says, like, I've gone down some dark alleys on the internet. I've never seen child pornography. But uh, the co- I am sorry. I guess I'm stepping on your story. You yeah, no, no. That's a, yeah. And then he says, I've seen something called cock fingering, yeah. like a lot, like way more <laughs> than I've ever searched for anything near it. So I guess what I'm saying is that if if child porn is rampant, quote, rampant on the Internet, then cock fingering is happening in this room <laughs> as we speak. Uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I remember just thinking that was so funny because it was. It was a classic Stanhope, you know, it was dirty, but it was also making a pretty good point. And uh, and I remember uh, going out that night and uh, going to a bar called The Coronet and meeting a few friends. And I think I told the bartender that bit and I told oh. somebody else. And then Fairbanks was there <laughs> with his dad. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why. To the, his dad seems like such a cool guy, and he is. But but I guess I might have overestimated just because I st- I started going into the cock fingering thing, and then uh, it was it got really awkward because he was like, wait, so what is this a cock fingering? I guess it's something where <laughs> you put your your index finger in someone's the urethra part of the penis or whatever. And then I'm like, why am I explaining cock fingering all of a sudden to my friend's dad? It was just really awkward, and that was the first time I ever met him. But. Uh, yeah, and another, you're like still a, laugh at that. He thinks you're like a cock fingering expert. Well, and also, <laughs> why are you watching all the? Yeah, videos? I'm gonna you're always like, be no. the cock fingering guy. Like, whatever happened to that guy who was talking about <laughs> cock fingering or whatever? For the full uncut episode, head to Patreon.com/slash World Record Podcast. For the full uncut episode, head to Patreon.com/slash World Record Podcast. Patreon.com/slash World Record Podcast.